Hey guys, welcome to the Bad Guy Shop again tonight. We're uh, we're we're looking at the, all our new shiny rear end parts. Uh, part of our kit was from uh, PTFE, just like the front end stuff. This is the rear end stuff to match. Uh, we've got a new ring and pinion ready to go into our ten bolt that we hope is going to last, uh, which is all painted, ready to go there, just waiting waiting to be assembled. Uh, we have a whole counter full of stuff here. So new ring and pinion, uh, new brand new calipers uh, that appear to be powder coated red. Uh, this is the actually the stock rear end cover which is powder coated red, and these are our stock backing plates which are powder coated red. And Phil did these for us as well. Uh, classic cycles, sorry, Phil at Classic Cycles. Uh, also. Are not the threaded part, but the other part of the U-bolts, the part that rusts, so we got them better as well. And our leaf shackles. Uh, what else do we have on the go here? There are a few things Solly forgot to mention because the cameraman cut him off, but we'll mention those a little bit later in the video. Stay tuned, and as always, smash the like button. So first step here was to pound out the races out of the inner center chunk. So Rod just popped out the first one. I didn't get that on video. Next thing we're going to do is roll this thing over and pop that one out since they're getting replaced. All right, for the center chunk here, Jay removed the uh, outer ring gear. What was that? Like a 300 or something like that? Oh, or a no. two something? Uh, 262 or something to turn. Oh. Pretty sure you can't use that word on YouTube. Okay, 262 or something not, not, look at the size of that. That looks like some sort of prehistoric weapon or something. Crap, like that would do some damage. That weighs about 30 pounds. That would fit. Flat and wide, buddy. Flat and wide. Right. So that was probably a really nice highway gear, but uh, isn't going to suit our knees at all. What's next up here? Next up, we're going to get these bearings pressed off so we can press on the new bearings. And hopefully, these bolts will. So this is how you get bearings off when you don't have the right tool to press them off. Basically what Jay's doing there is he's cutting a, a notch right across here and then we're going to take a cold chisel and just crack that. Split, split it. There you go. The phone is my eye protection. Yes. The prize. Broken. So we show you that there. Basically, he cut it just not all the way through so it didn't damage the uh, surface that it mounts back onto. And then split it. Here, guys, we're just uh, filing down the, uh, the surface where the, where the ring gear mounts on the case uh, just to make sure it's perfectly flat and there's no burrs. We did this to the ring gear as well.
going to press our new bearings on. Make sure you put them on the right way. I've seen people actually do this. <laughs> Whoops. It's expensive. That's why we use our old race. Keep the, the race retained with the bearing, with that bearing. Sweet. Because you never know. This one might have been made on Friday and that one might have been made on Tuesday. And you know how that goes. Hey, so I've been at this one making a sacrificial bearing so we can set our pinion depth, set our pinion depth here. Um, put shims in here, set our pinion. So this one we had to sacrifice uh, so we can do this with it. If this was a new one, it would stop right here and it wouldn't go anywhere. And that's what I was at. All right, so next up, we got to pound the races in to the differential. We already did the uh, the bottom one. I'll show you that real quick. There you go. This shiny new part right down there, that's the inner race, I guess, for lack of better words. And uh, Jay's just uh, preparing a little tool here. Put the uh, outer pinion race in. Everybody likes a tight rear end. All right, so next up we installed the backing plates, powder coated red, Rod's favorite color. I love red. So next up here is the axle bearings and then the uh, seals. All right, so the next thing we did here is install the pinion and the uh, pinion nut and run it down. And uh, I think the general goal here is to make sure there's no slop or play in it. It's coming back out. But uh, like I said, this is uh, the sacrificial bearings here just to uh, figure out where things really are with this thing. Okay guys, let's talk a little bit about some of the things I have on the table. These uh, anti-squat leaf brackets came from Pro Touring F-Body. And what they're designed to do is A, they're stronger than the stock ones. Uh, they come with all the hardware, but as you notice, there's a couple holes here for moving to your configuration or move to your customization, how you want the leaf spring to be. Essentially, the idea here is to allow uh, you to kind of preload the rear end uh, so that uh, you have less tire hop. So that's the general gist. Uh, they're nice and solid, super love them. They come powder coated. And like I said, they came with all the hardware and uh, they even came with, uh, geez, I'm not quite sure where they are. Oh, right here. They came with uh, longer bolts and uh, these little clips to go up inside the uh, bottom of the floor. So those are nice. Uh, let's move on over and look at uh, the um, leaf springs. So the leaf springs come, the ones we ordered anyways, are from the um, Super Duty package. Actually, I'm wrong. They're called Torque Tracks, and they have a, a spherical bearing in them uh, to allow them to uh, move truer and just kind of um, articulate a little bit better. And for the other end, they come with uh, new uh, bushings, urethane bushings. They also come with all the hardware, so all the nuts, bolts, uh, leaf spring hangers uh, all come with that. So that's all kind of part of a kit. And now let's talk about the shocks. So we ordered front and back uh, Viking Performance uh, shocks. They're, a, I guess they're a stainless steel uh, or a, yeah, they're sort of a brushed finish with adjustable rebound and compression. Uh, and when you order the leaf springs from PTFB, you kind of pick. So there's a, a more economical version of a shock. This happens to be what we went with and uh, kind of worked for the way we wanted to set the car up. 
All of this stuff is great. It's just uh, generally stronger uh, than the stock stuff. Uh, the leaf springs are meant to control uh, the rear end a bit better than some of the stock stuff that I, I can tell you by holding it in my hand. It's uh, a lot thicker and stronger and heavier duty. And, uh, you know, just from my conversations with Dave, I believe that this is going to set our car up the way we want it to be. Sure, guys are doing things like four links uh, and other sort of more elaborate uh, suspension for autocross. At the end of the day, it's really expensive. Uh, you're talking about kits that are four, five, seven thousand dollars in that price range, and uh, I'm just not sure that there's a, a benefit there. Uh, again, depending on how you're going to drive your car and the way we're setting this car up, it's by far better than stock. Uh, do I think it's going to handle like a you know a brand new car? N no, it's going to handle like a, a muscle car uh, would, uh, but better. Uh, so, uh, I, I guess oh, we'll wait and the proof is in the pudding, you know, because everybody's got a different opinion, but uh, we'll be doing driving videos when we get this thing on the road and we'll give you your, uh, kind of give you an opinion at that point. But uh, from building other cars and doing similar suspension upgrades, I think for uh, our money, uh, what we're spending, uh, this is a, a good middle of the road option and uh, definitely will perform uh, far beyond the way the car did out of the box. Uh, the folks at PTFB were fantastic when ordering all these things. Uh, again, and I said this in the first video, uh, this is the first Trans Am I've ever built. And uh, you know, there were things I was trying to figure out, like what size tires should I run? Uh, how should I set up the suspension? What if I want to lower it a little bit? Uh, what if I want to take it to the track? Uh, you know, sometimes you're ordering things online and you order different things uh, and together they don't really all work that well. Uh, so uh, to me, uh, calling the folks at PTFB, uh, especially talking to Dave, uh, was uh, a blessing. Uh, he was able to help me guide through uh, a lot of the uh, pitfalls. He asked a tremendous amount of questions about things, you know, what size tires am I running? What size uh, rims am I going to run? Uh, what modifications am I making to the car? Uh, how do I want to drive the car? How much power is it going to have? There, there, there was a ton of things that he asked. Uh, and uh, through that back and forth process, we were able to figure out what was the right suspension package for uh, our intention. And uh, honestly, just from bolting things on so far, it seems like that's uh, really worked out really, really well. So big shout out, uh, Dave from PTFB. Thanks so much for your help. Uh, really looking forward to driving this uh, Phoenix when we get it on the road. We're just playing with our nuts. Yeah. Do you like that? If they tighten up well, then it's fine. Perfect. Uh, we get the lash pretty much set. We, uh... We've adjusted the shims, checked the lash, it's pretty close. So we're gonna snug it up a bit, do a second check, and verify what we got. And if we're gonna add or subtract, then we, we shall subtract. do so. So we got. Oh, well. Got nothing apparently. Yeah. I'm contacting your plunger. What happened? We're holding the pinion as tight as possible so that way we're only rotating the ring back and forth. And the ideal setting is 5 to 12 thou, I believe. Detail backlash. Yui, what's next? Take it all apart again. Take it all apart again and press the bearings onto the pinion. Set our pinion neck again, put the seal on, fresh sleeve on. We want to check if our pattern. We're hitting right in the middle, we're hitting high, that means we have to bring it up into the head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you guys learn with this little? It's a painting process. But our pinion depth isn't quite right. Too high or too low? It's too low. What's the... What's the... What's the... What's the... What's the... We are pressing on the final application of the pinion bearing. We've test fitted with our sacrificial bearings and uh, 
tested and measured and tested and measured and tested and measured. So we got uh, the appropriate backlash and opinion depth and, uh, and we finally got the right bearings. We're putting it all together. So for the last setup, we took all that assembly apart because it was just with some sacrificial bearings to get things set. So we put the new bearings on the pinion, press them on, press them on new seal, crushed sleeve, put the yoke on, torqued it down to give us the right preload for that, uh, installed the ring in the housing, set the shims, actually changed the shim and got it to run a little better on the pattern and tighten up our backlash to about 5,000. Torqued our carrier bearings in, axles in, C-clip, center pin, Nice. I'm gonna point out a couple things. So when you say axle, you mean you slid these in? Yep. And you did you say you put the C clip in? Yeah. C clips are in. Let's see if I can get a close up. You uh, can't really. You can't. So right there, in between that S, S spring, that's uh, that's the end of the axle, and that pin that goes through keeps them from collapsing in on each other. Yeah. So if it collapses in another eighth of an inch, you would see the C clip. But now it's okay. stuck in, stuck into the okay. you know, spider gear there, so it can't come out. That, that's what holds it all together. Okay. This, this this little tiny bolt right here holds everything together. It's the linchpin. And when that goes bad, all oh boys are making a mess. It makes a mess. Ask me how I know. <laughs> hey, what's going on here? You're spreading out some lube. Not lube. No lube. <laughs> I'm just kidding. RTV. RTV sealant it is. Yeah. To go that's, that's go along with the brand new gasket that Sean's wearing around his arm. RTV. Yeah. Uh, Rub the what? <laughs> what? Rub the tuna. <laughs> there goes the three cents we were going to make on this video. <laughs> We don't have any uh, agreement with DFO to do. Who's that? What about my pictures? <laughs> what does it stand for, do you think? What does it You know, rub, rub the what? <laughs> Come on now. What does it really stand for? Room, it must stand for something. Room, room temperature vulcanizer. Really? Yeah. Man, you're full of info. How do you know that? I read it on a poster one day. Thanks, Cliff Clavin. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> that was a nice guy and brought you a pair of gloves, son. Yeah? <laughs> it was nice and brought you some gloves. I suppose I could have told you they were there. You're, you're just torquing these bolts down on the cover. Yep. That's it. Shiny. Limited. Limited slip slip only. Only. Yeah, there you go. Don't slip on the loop. Nice and wide. Even wider. Juice in it. Juice in it. Yep. So next go the brake calipers. Brake calipers. Got a couple nuts. Rotors. Rotors. Sorry, rotors, yes. I'm done. Yeah, that must pass on my stove. I'm done. Yeah, that must pass on my stove. Oh. said before we uh, we got uh, the pinion all installed bearings were had to be pressed on because we got rid of the sacrificial ones 
Everything's all done, tight the spec. Uh, then we dropped our carrier in and shimmed it accordingly. And we have a perfect eye flash. It's, it's so nice. Uh, then we just dressed it all up, put everything that had to go on on it. So the brakes are on, covers on, my axle's in, you? All in, all good. So yeah. all little bits and pieces, accessories on, ready to go, drop underneath and... Basically all we have left to do is run the brake line on. Run the brake line on, you know, put it on the pad. Soon. Soon. Looks good though. Sweet. Came out really nice. One step further. Hey guys, it's Corey from Bad Guys Productions. If you like this video, hit that like button so we can continue to provide you with the content that you want to see. And be sure to hit that subscribe and notify so you can stay up to date with the most current Bad Gas Productions content. From the crew here at Bad Gas, pedal down and hands on the wheel.